can I prepared a slide back um, that I wanted to quickly show you for my presentation. So I, I couldn't res uh, restrain myself enough, so I have a, a long slide back. I'll try to get through it in five or six minutes. My problem is absolutely not with sustainability. Uh, so I, I do not challenge at all the very, very important goals that we are talking uh, about. But my beef is with the idea that restrictions of competition would somehow serve that goal. I think it is exactly the opposite. So if we're going to go for restrictions of competition, and the Dutch Competition Authority uh, very actively is trying to, by stretching the competition requirement, then um, we might, I fear actually with the two risks that I will conclude on at the end, that we might do harm to the environmental uh, objectives that we have in mind. The key underlying question here is, whether indeed restrictions of competition are going to stimulate sustainability initiatives. And so it's a, it's a very fundamental premise here of the green antitrust movement that somehow it is. Now, economics, certainly, uh, uh, you know, public economics 101, there, is, there can be conflicts between uh, environmental issues or public goods uh, and competition, absolutely. You know, there's externality problems, which are very, very severe, big problems. And uh, the, the standard way of solving them is by internalizing the externalities. And by, but not by restricting competition. Actually, if you restrict competition, for example, if you allow a horizontal agreement amongst competitors, there's no reason at all to think that they would somehow then start internalizing these externalities. But we really need to think about the question, why would we need a merger for, for such a, a shift? Why would we expect firms that build up market power uh, dominance? Why would they have an interest at all in investing in, in green? That is a key question. So should we expect, in other words, even put a little green arrow there, so this is the key question, should we expect companies to take more corporate social responsibility in cooperation than they, than they would in competition? Well, let me get to, this, to the question. So if we are going to think about this question, are companies doing more in, com in collusion or in cooperation than in competition? We first need to make two basic premises, I think, that are reasonable to accept by everybody, and that is that people care about sustainable products. They have a willingness to pay for them. It might be a small willingness to pay, but they typically have a willingness to pay for more sustainable uh, production. And also, corporations are fundamentally interested in profits. And we should take into, we should really keep a skeptical eye in that in that regard. We know from large, large literature, firms are interested in profits. So also, green they see as a dimension where there's some cost to be made, greener product, and then there's benefits in the form of they will have consumers, customers that have a higher willingness to pay. So we know that if you let companies talk to one another, and Adam Smith already has a famous quote about that, then there's risk of them colluding on other aspects as well. And here the idea is to let them argue about and agree about uh, sustainability agreements, but it's likely that that will then follow. There's a great risk that that will be followed by agreements on other aspects like production and price uh, as well. And if we then look at this a little bit more carefully, if we just you know, do a little I.O. model, we can do that, then we actually find that um, uh, if there's a willingness to pay, then that companies will, are going to do more in green in competition than if you allow them to make agreements on sustainability levels. So I won't go to this model in full. It's a model with uh, Yoshi Spiegel that we published now several years ago. But ultimately, the idea is that firms have a profit function in which they can invest in V, which is sustainability level, Firms, consumers then have a higher willingness to pay and firms are going to profit maximize. And then if we look at the duopoly situation, we look at the equilibria, we can look at one equilibrium where there's competition in, in, in the sustainability level, and competition in quantity or price. We can look at equilibria where they can talk about sustainability but compete on price or talk about uh, price and compete on sustainability or they talk about both. And what we find, and this is actually what the policy is, right? So the policy is to let them talk about sustainability, coordinate sustainability levels, but not on price or quantity. Then what we find is it's a very strong uh, proposition that also holds if we extend, for example, to more than two firms. We find that, you know, this, uh, the V level, sustainability level, under sustainability agreements is the lowest. So it's lower than the V star, which is the sustainability level. And the reason is ultimately that the firms are... Uh, eliminating a dimension of competition. And so they start saving on their sustainability investments and they do benefit in the form, uh, you know, they, they, they do benefit a little bit from the willingness to pay, but if the, you know, the costs are high enough, they're, you know, actually it holds quite generally, then they're going to save on these costs and eliminate that dimension of competition, which is a costly dimension for them. So you should rather let them compete. And actually, if you really want to have more green done, then you should allow them a production cartel because 
as you can see, the level of green in production cartels, so not talk about sustainability, but talk about prices or quantities, then they're going to invest most. And the reason is ultimately that then they can, they can benefit from their investments fully. And so they're still competing on the sustainability level, attracting customers, but then they can benefit fully with a high price in the second stage uh, when they're colluding on price. But if you want to do that, then you need to really absolutely very strongly uh, 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 keep an eye on compensation because consumers are going to be hurt quite a bit by this. Now, this compensation requirement is hard. And this is a, a little graph where in, there's the sustainability level on the vertical axis and the prices on the horizontal. Consumers are, there's an indifference curve for consumers. Consumers like to be at the upper left, so higher sustainability. Uh, lower price, but firms have a, have a tendency to go to the lower right. So they want higher price, lower sustainability, that's more profitable for them. And so the competition authority really has to force the companies to go to this point where, uh, the, where on, the, on the compensation curve, so on the consumer indifference curve, and the information that the competition authority would need for that is just incredibly high, and the firms would have an incentive to, uh, to try to get away with less green and a higher price. So to conclude, and my final uh, comment, I fear a strong risk that, and we've, we've seen this in the chicken case in the Netherlands, that if we go this way and we say, look, companies are going to take their corporate so social responsibility in coordination with one another, sort of self-regulation, um, that, that governments who are the first party to actually solve these issues by, by making sure that these externalities get internalized, that governments would actually have an, a further excuse not to regulate. It's exactly what we saw in the chicken. They can say, look, there's now self-regulation and we do, need to, uh, do not need to, uh, need, need to regulate it with government regulation. But whereas that would be, if with these two risks, the situation would be far worse than second best. Thank you.